Hey guys, welcome to the channel, and if you're new here, my name is Liam. I'm one half of DeploymentZone.tv, and normally I then talk about Winters because he's the other half of DeploymentZone.tv, but tonight he's not my other half, is he, Chris? No, because I'm wearing his... Well, I was trying to wear his skin, but it yeah, didn't work properly. Too, I'm about to abandon it. Now, it? It's After very lockdown, loose. It's, it's too loose on you. It doesn't sort of sit yeah. nicely. It was so, disgusting. Uh, some of you may remember Chris because he's been on uh, videos on the channel before and famously we did, I say famously, I mean that's maybe <laughs> hyping it a little bit more than it was. But we used Well, to I got a phone this... call from uh, Johnny Depp actually, funnily enough, okay. going, hey man, where's uh, where where's uh, Endless Cacophony podcast, which is what Liam was about to talk about. Yeah, so that Endless sounds yeah. like sounds like Johnny Depp, right? That's yeah, that's... <laughs> So um, we used to do the Endless Cacophony podcast and historically the Endless Cacophony podcast was audio only and we uploaded it to Podbean and Spotify and iTunes and what have you. And so um, what what I have also been doing as well as weekly videos to YouTube is I've been doing weekly videos to DeploymentZone.tv, sit and talks. Um, and I actually thought that perhaps it would be a good place to bring the ECP back because it's more chill, more fun, enjoy ourselves. Um, and I thought it'd be great content for the DZTV subscribers. So we're now doing a weekly Endless Cacophony podcast in DeploymentZone.tv um, uh, because I genuinely, honestly, and I don't like being nice, but I really actually quite missed recording them with you because we just sat there and had a uh, laugh, which is, yeah, is, is nice, isn't it? So um, no, I wanted yeah. to bring it back, but one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to refresh it a little bit. And this, oh, oh by the way, I should warn anyone who's not seen the Angus Cacophony podcast before who does watch the channel that this will have a level of explicit content in it. Um, so I just need to get that out of the way because it's what happens when Chris and I get together and start chatting. So I wanted to um, I wanted to refresh it a little bit and have it a little bit different. Hence this, because Endless Cacophony previously was just a black screen with some words on it. Um, so I noticed that Quipster had been using some new software to do his um, incredibly well thought out named fireside chats in DZTV, uh, and he recognised he recommended this software to us. And I think Chris, you will agree. Um, as a man who used to work in IT as well, that or still works in IT, that this is probably without doubt the most fucking horrendous piece of software we've ever used. He did us a bad. He's done us a so, bad. Yeah, he did us a bad. It's probably the right way. So again, tonight we started. We tried to start recording about quarter to eight. It's now twenty past, and we've just started because, uh, as a piece of podcasting software, the second you hit record, the audio drops out. Uh, and we can hear maybe every third word that each of us is saying. Yeah, it's good. So so it makes it really difficult to podcast, unless, like Alex, you'd quite like the sound of your own voice. Um, so, so what we had to do... <laughs> and then, so last time... How are we, we podcasting, last... Liam? Tell people how well, yeah. we're podcasting in 2021. So last week, when we solved it after 45 minutes of messing around, we were, we were using Discord audio, and it worked quite nicely, and it was quite stable. And tonight, even Discord audio is not stable, because this software, Discord audio works nicely, and then we, we load up Riverside, and it stops working. It doesn't like it, because I guess it's sharing bandwidth for upload, etc. So in 2021, whilst podcasting for the new uh, and improved Endless Cacophony, I currently have Chris on a voice call on my iPhone going through the headphones so that I can actually talk to him whilst he records locally through Riverside so that it sounds nice, hopefully, hopefully, so it sounds nice for YouTube. And that's what we're doing today, isn't it, Chris? It's great, isn't it? That's what we're doing. Um, at least now I can hear you for more than like three seconds at a time, which is cool. Cause when I can you hear, hear every word you say, which is quite nice. Yeah, when you're listening to Liam, he's like, that's what it sounds like normally. But on this software, it's like, rip, 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 rip. it's even worse. So, well, the thing we're all is, good now. the, we're the all nice ready. part for you, the nice part for you there is that you that sounds like you heard more than I was hearing from you. <laughs> yeah, because I I just got a like, uh, and so, uh, and then it just froze, and that was all I got. So. Yeah. um I think uh, this is an interesting thing, actually. If you guys know of decent podcast recording software that we can use over the web and record locally, etc., then please drop it in the comments below because, quite frankly, this is the worst piece of software I think I've ever used and I'm probably going to ask them for a complete and utter refund because it's yeah. just unusable. Um, and we're going to go find some better software because something better has got to exist. Something There's got to be something better than this out there. There has to be because yeah. this is just horrific. So, um, Okay, so there's that. And if I'll needs check must, out every single one as well. I'll, I'll actually, I'll actually look at every single suggestion because it's time to go on the hunt. Yeah, and I think the worst case scenario, what I'm actually going to do is is voice call you with a webcam 
and then have another camera video in each other. I don't know how uh, it's going to get convoluted if we do it that yeah. way. But anyway, it's by the by. Don't worry about it. And there's Cacophony's back. That's what matters. Yeah, we're here. And I can actually hear you talk, so we can actually discuss Warhammer rather than guessing what each other says, which is quite nice. Nice. Um, so, so this is this is like I said, the new form. Um, we will probably see uh, every sort of four-ish weeks. You'll see an endless Cacophony on YouTube, which will also go on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, etc. But if you want a weekly episode of the Endless Cacophony, then you're going to have to tune into DeploymentZone.tv. Head on over to the website there's a link below uh, sign up and subscribe and, and you'll get even more of this content um so this week what we normally do is we normally pick some sort of article from the community page or stuff and have a chat about it but we only did this about four days ago so mm-hmm. there's a couple of other things that i want to talk about in this particular episode so to start with chris this is something that i think is going to get you very excited mm-hmm. like this is something that's going to get you pull your t-shirt up rub yourself with butter excited um up until recently, I have been a 40k previewer, and now Games Workshop have offered me the opportunity to also be an Age of Sigmar previewer as well. Oh boy! Hang <laughs> oh on. Oh boy! Age of Sigmar is the uh, the game system that I always used to try and uh, derail every conversation into, and now it'll be a legitimate. It won't be that fun anymore. Don't want to talk uh, about uh, it now. And I'll be- <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's the end of that. Now he's going to start to try and get us talking about Blood Bowl or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Ooh, Blood Bowl, yeah. But I um, do you know what? I this might this might make thirteen thousand people click unsubscribe. But I don't think for one minute I'm going hardcore away from forty k. I'm not. I love 40k. I'll always play 40k. Uh, Brom and I are currently working on uh, something special, which we, I'm not going to talk about because I don't want any time pressures. Um, but we're working on something special as well, which is 40k specific. I'm super 40k hype at the moment. But I am getting insanely attracted to the world of Age of Sigma. Now, mm-hmm. considering that the, the majority of my audience, I would assume, is if not all of it, are 40k fans, because that's all I've ever really covered before. And knowing that you know bits i mean i asked you earlier earlier and you said specifically 32 percent of the law for Age of Sigma. <clears throat> i think yeah. i knew about uh 68 percent before but things have moved we haven't had a chance to play things for a long time so i think a bit of it's dropped out but i, th- I think one of the things that um is getting everyone really excited about age of sigma at the moment isn't actually age of sigma but it's a game set in the age of sigma universe that really highlights just how far ahead Age of Sigmar's sculpts have got at the moment, and that's the uh, the beautiful cursed city. Now, uh, as much as I love some of the most recent Necron models, as much as I love uh, the, some of the newer Space Marine stuff, like the new Gravis intercessors and stuff, I'm a big fan of. Uh, some of the refreshes that we've seen, Howling Banshees, some of the new characters, huge fan. I have to say, and I think I've almost always said this, that I just think in terms of variety of of sculpts or, or or the impressiveness of sculpts i just think age of sigma genuinely knocks 40k out of the park of course and, it does, and I, yeah. wa- I wonder if they're a bit more restricted in 40k and maybe that's why but i just when you look at some of the bigger more impressive models and some of the centerpieces you get in age of sigma army i just think they obliterate 40k for how impressive the model range is and that's my personal opinion and i know we talked about at- it before we've talked about it before and uh, age of sigma is is 40k has got an established aesthetic that they kind of have to stick to no matter what they do and sigma is like whatever you want to do you can do it and we've seen some cool stuff um in the style of age sigma like the the triumph of uh triumph of saint catherine is it yeah that's cool yeah things like that that's way more sort of age sigma style because age sigma has been doing these kind of little diorama pieces like the osiark bone reaper uh Lord, whatever his name is, can't remember yeah, yeah, any yeah. of their names. Cav- Cavalo- um, no, it's not Cavalos, is it? He's the yeah, I, <clears> I don't know. Something like that, but yeah, um, I think it really just lets them go crazy with whatever they want to do. And damn, do they go crazy with whatever they want to do? Because some of the new stuff is incredible. We had the Soul Blight uh, previews on the same day as the uh, the new Snake Bitey Orcs, and the Soul Blight stuff looks so good. The vampires. Well, Soul, Soul we're is, yeah, I was about to say it's sort of vamp- old vampire counts type stuff, but that's what Soul Blight is. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we sort of seen them do these big centerpieces in 40k. You're right. The, the Triumph of St. Catherine's one. We've also seen uh, the new Catan Shard of the Void Dragon, the Silent King. Mm-hmm. So, there's a couple of them out there. I, I guess to some extent, maybe you would probably classify Mortarian and Magnus as these huge centerpiece models that exist. Uh, and you're right, right? So. 
for something like yeah. the guard, it's got to be a giant tank, and there's only so much you can do to make a giant tank. And I don't get me wrong, yeah. I'm a I'm a bane blade nut. They're cool. There's only so much you can do with that. Marines, you you can't scale a space marine to the size of a Catan shard. It just doesn't really yeah, work. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do there. Age of Sigma has this ability because it's kind of a complete refresh since it started. And I don't know how long ago it was Age of Sigma launched because I never really played fantasy. Um, further a, a cu- further ago than than most people think, actually. It, I think was it's it? been out for it's been out for a fairly long time now. Yeah. <clears throat> so I was kind of hoping, considering my audience is forty k, and you're right by the way, the um, the new um, Warhammer Quest box set called Cursed City. You said, yeah, the Cursed City. Yeah, it's something I mean, amazing. Blackstone Fortress has some cool models in it for a Warhammer Quest type game. Curse City has just blown Blackstone Fortress out of the water, in my yeah. opinion, for model range. It's just phenomenal. There's another thing about the Curse City that's kind of got some additional appeal, and that is that it's kind of reminiscent of uh, More Time, which is the old... Um, for people that <laughs> that haven't, weren't around back then, it was like... <laughs> um, it was like a fancy, a, a really grim fancy version of uh, Necromunda that's out now. It was alongside the old Necromunda at the time. Um, it was all about going into the city of Mordheim uh, that's basically been... I can't remember if it was hit by a comet or it was... My, my lore is a bit messed up, but there were there's weird stones smashed everywhere. Everyone's gone mad inside it. You don't go in there. And bands of adventurers go in to uh, hunt for this stuff. And it's pretty grim. It's pretty nasty. And all the artwork was really, like, grim. It was all about madness, people going mad. And this has got kind of that that same kind of vibe going on. Not not quite the same, but it's got enough of the kind of mad dead going into this cursed city, you know. And that, that's a big vibe for for the for the older fans. Shall we say? I think I, I mean I never I was never again I never played more time. I've basically been a, a 40k only player for sort of the whole of my games workshop existence. I guess you you would call it that. I did have I had a couple of fantasy armies. I had a high elves army and I had a um uh, the empire I had an empire yeah. army. Uh, but I that was mostly because I had a friend of mine who played fantasy and I played 40k and I was trying to get him into 40k and he was trying to get me into fantasy so I sort of committed to buying a couple of these armies and, and I played a couple of games didn't completely understand what was going on and then he got absolutely hooked on 40k and, and that's what we've ever, we've played ever since yeah, obviously yeah. fantasy as he knew it then got disbanded essentially and Age of Sigma launched and I know that from the f- I mean you may have been involved in this but I know that from the from the uh, games workshop sort of community on the whole, when Age of Sigmar launched, it was met really negatively, wasn't it? It wasn't very popular, this decision to, to sort yeah. of cancel the, the fantasy world. Yeah, I mean, the old world is much loved, and that's why there's so many games still coming out now, today, like the Total War games that are set in the old world, and it's why they've got this sort of Forge World, old world project. And people who are sort of really big into the old world probably found it harder to adjust to Age of Sigma, but Age of Sigma as a game system and a um, a world of its own has grown massively uh, over the years. They've put a lot of thought into it. It is a test bed for 40k. We've seen a lot of rules start in Age of Sigma and move into 40k, but um, as, as a thing itself, it's starting to get its own personality. I understand now why people felt like this, because the, the old Warhammer world was quite a small thing, there were lots of books set in it. Um, the races were all very identifiable. There was, you know, it was like humans and elves and orcs, and it was all. It made sense to people straight away, um, and it had this kind talking. of grim thing. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, and this is. Ex- I think this is exactly why Games Workshop moved away from it because it wasn't their own thing to to play with. It was, but it, you know, it was so ba- heavily based on things that came before it. So when they came to Age of Sigma, they went, right, let's just mix all that up. And what we're seeing now is we're seeing the return of, of the old races in new forms. So one of the, the first to come back was the Sylvaneth, which kind of represent uh, the old... Well, at the time, they represented the old Wood Elves, and they're all just tree people now, and uh, branch witches, and sort of spooky nature things. And then you've got the Ideneth, which were a kind of like a weird hybrid dark elf... Yep. Elf kind of thing going on. Who are all fish people, sea people? And then you've got the Lumineth, where they've tried to redo uh, High Elves, but unfortunately they've um, 
they've given them weird kangaroos and giant cow men so <laughs> to be Ooh. honest with you though like i kind of so i'm a i'm a monumental tolkien fan like yeah I, I i don't i dread to think how many different media formats i've bought the lord of the rings trilogy of trilogy on um, <laughs> yeah, in terms yeah, yeah. Of the videos. i've i've there's the very few series of books i've actually read i'm a huge tolkienite and, and i think that to some extent i'm kind of happy that they've came come away from the Tolkien universe and they've invented essentially their own sort of elvish races. So obviously, yeah, exactly. the, the the Deep Kin, um, the Realm Lords, uh, the Sylvaneth, they're not called elves anymore. No. They're called uh, how do I don't even know how you say it. A- elves. Elves. It's a- a- elves. It's elves. elves with an A at the front because yeah, 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 yeah. Copyright. Um, yeah. And I kind of like the the goat cow men and the and the fish men and the tree men i just i really yeah. like the fact that it's actually quite different to tolkien it's kind of it's i mean i think clearly it was done for intellectual property reasons i think i think that's just yeah. obvious we can tell why they've done it but again I, I kind of dig it because it comes away from the tolkien world and they i mean they create the lord of the Rings system as well they, if you want to play yeah Orcs, you Goblins, can play elves, that yeah yeah you can play yeah. lord of the rings yeah. that exists that world exists so they've they've gone down a path where I think they've taken Age of Sigma and they've clearly distinguished it away from Tolkien and Tolkien's ideal of what a fantasy realm was, or even any other fantasy realm that exists in things like um, yeah. World of Warcraft and that kind of stuff. It's 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 its own thing now, and you can't argue with that. Like it's they're working, you no, know, they're thing. working really well to to make their own thing, but it's not easy, is it? I mean, they've made these. You're taking things that people love and you're trying to rebuild them. You're going to get haters. Haters are going to hate, you know, and. For example, a good example is maybe Lumineth. Lumineth have got some great models, but they're not high elves, and they do have kangaroos. Bit of a weird, <laughs> bit of a weird design choice there, GW. And they do have giant cows. I love the giant cows. Not super hot on the kangaroos, but the rest Why? of their models, uh, the Why Eltherian you, model. Were, we live in England. Why would you love a cow over a kangaroo? We live in England where there's loads of kangaroos. Is that... I mean, I don't... No, get why would you love a cow over a kangaroo? We see cows all the time. I, I yeah. ate one today for dinner. I don't exactly. understand why... I'd rather have a kangaroo. It'd be much more interesting. No. Why would you ride a kangaroo? They're, they're, they're upright most of the time. It's ridiculous. I'm not... You sit I'm in his pouch, Chris. You sit in his pouch. You could nice sit in his pouch. Warm. With a spear. No, I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not into it. You know, they went with with the. Um, they tried to come up with new mounts, right? This is a good thing that Age of Sigmar has done. They've gone. They've gone. What can we? What can we put people on that's different? And they and then someone at the back just went, put them on a shark, and someone's gone. What? Put them on an eel. What? Yeah, put them on a giant chicken, and that's what they've done. So the Stormcast ended up on giant chickens, the Iron Deepkin literally are on eels and sharks. And then someone missed the mark when they shouted kangaroo. It's fair enough. They weren't going to hit it every time. Who knows what they're going to put them on next? You know, it could be anything. Riding riding eels and sharks and giant sea turtles is fucking cool, by the way. It is cool. Ideneth Deepkin are a beautifully designed army. Not everyone's cup of tea. I get it because you've got, um, you're on sea creatures, but you're on the land. But then they kind of explain it that it's all like magical sea, isn't it? And the tides coming in and the Ether Sea. So I, so the, uh, the Lumineth, not the Lumineth, sorry, the Ideneth Deep Kid is one of the first pieces of law in actual Age of Sigma that I've read. And maybe in a minute I'll get you to give us a sort of ten minute rundown. Not that long. I want to go and watch some telly in a bit. I've yeah, had yeah. Enough of fucking dicking around with the software tonight. Yeah. But um, so maybe you can give us a little bit of a rundown of the of the sort of background to what Age of Sigma is in terms of the universe. Because I'd imagine the very basics is quite simple. But so Deepkin yeah. is is the first piece of law that I actually read, and I open the book and I genuinely I've got I've got the um the battle tome. Uh, it's not a codex for Age of Sigma. It's called a battle tome. I've got the battle tome. I started to read it. And I was apprehensive when I started to realize. I thought I'm not going to like this I, as a fantasy nut, as a as a as a Tolkien fan. I'm not going to enjoy this at all. And I read the law on a uh, Ideneth raid on a village and how it works yep. and what happens. And I tell you what, I was hooked instantly on that army just by reading that bit alone. They're part of the good guy team, but they like to steal children's souls, don't they? That also I like, by the way, that they're good guy team, but grim and dark and yeah. horrific. I'll go into like, that in a minute. Or uh, that, that's another thing they haven't they haven't sort of said that order are good people. They're just part no. of the order, you know. And there's certain groups that are part of order, 
and it just it just seems to be part like who which of the major forces they're generally more allied to than than not but um the so it's interesting, Ossiarch, actually so, so, so just quickly on that there's four major um orders or, or four major grand alliances sort of, thank you grand alliances see chris knows a lot more about this stuff than i am than i do <laughs> and the four major grand alliances the reason why people maybe would assume that order is a good guy is because you have order destruction chaos and death and mm-hmm. if you listen to the other three, they all sound like bad guys. Destruction, chaos, and death sound like mm-hmm. bad guys. So order logically and has the um, the Stormcast Eternals in it as well, which are kind of the AOS Space Marines nowadays, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. That they're in the order, so it's assumed the order is good. And I I sort of think that the Deepkin are in order just because of their sort of base faction race, because they're elves. So yeah, that's and it's who they came the from. Order. So e- everyone. Should I just go into a little bit of the law so it makes a bit more sense? I'm, I am not. I would, I'm interested in hearing this, so yeah, please yeah. do. I am not super up to date, and I'm going to get things wrong. And you can have a have a whale of a time in the comments telling me how stupid I am. No, nah, cool. mate, they're all 40k players. They will have no idea. Don't worry. About yeah, it. they'll be like, yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah, sounds yeah. legit. Okay, <laughs> the rough the rough story, and I I did know more than this, but like I said, it's been a long time since I've been allowed to do hobby. And this stuff fades away for other things. But um, <laughs> I've just been playing a lot of League of Legends, and that's all I can remember now. Um, so, Age Sigma. The old world, our beautiful Warhammer fantasy, um, we lo- people lo- humans lost, the good guys lost, right? And chaos took over the old world, and it, everything was very, very bad, and it, everyone died, and it was... <laughs> oh god um, and that was the end okay so they just literally just exploded the old fantasy universe and everybody was blown to bits and uh, the Stardesh like ate all the elves or something or ate some of them or it, it was something like that no Stardesh ate all the elves um, which is why they're not different all of them. now no ate all of them Teclis survived didn't he maybe but he ate all the the elves themselves because the the big elves the reason why we have all these weird mutant ones in Age of Sigma is because they were like inside Slaanesh and they tricked yes. Slaanesh into opening up and all the elf souls came out and they were able to make anyway that's jumping ahead so this basically <laughs> the face says it all I told you that this software is shit and it just quite literally booted Chris straight out of the room just got rid of him I don't know if it, it was listening to you and it got it super got bored. bored it got but bored but I thought yeah. I thought it was good I was I was enjoying it I don't quite know where you got to no I was all over the place it, it was that was uh, a terrible uh, start to retelling uh, <laughs> I could go get the book every single book's got the uh, little introduction piece all I was trying to say was, is that Sigma and a, and a dragon and some, everything became realms. The realms are like infinite realms. There's a realm of death, there's a realm of man, there's a realm of man, there's loads of realms, chaos and all that kind of stuff. The realm chaos gods fire, are back. realm of life. Yeah, they came back without Slanesh uh, originally. Um, death and Sigma were like buddies and they were like, yeah, and... Uh, there was like a pact made. Camera's just going out of focus for no reason now. Yeah, this is great fun. Um, there, there, there was different realms. I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know what I'm saying anymore. Everything just goes wrong, and I can't keep up with it. Yeah, you're Go read. massively. See, this is this is where we can tell how rusty Chris is because he can't. Not like the normal professionals. He can't <laughs> roll with the failures and failure. Like I, actually, he's yeah. nothing to do with that at all. This software is just terrible. So, yeah. so old world got killed off, right? They blew everything up. Yeah. Slanesh devoured all the elf souls. Old yeah, world na- gone. We're now in a world of, of realms. Um, so, th- what what gave birth? Do we know what gave birth to these new realms? Or how many there are? Are they are they like uh, numerous? Or is there is there just as yeah, many realms could- as you want? We do know what gave birth to these realms. Oh, good. That's just outside of that 32% that I was telling you about. <laughs> it's something to do with a dragon. <laughs> right, this is what I'm going to do, right? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reread the Age of Sigmar 
<laughs> introduction piece. And I'm going to explain it next time. There we go. Okay. <laughs> So next Way time we do this. next time we do a YouTube and the Skin Company podcast, if you want to know how the world of Age of Sigmar came into being, then tune in then and Chris will be researching. Yeah. I only messaged him about it about three or four o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, I didn't it's four or five time. hours later. So he hasn't had much time to read four pages in the codex. Um no. but but essentially the Og World got killed, right? Uh, and then Sigmar yeah. existed and there's all this I think it was eight different realms to start with. I might, yeah. I might be wrong. Was this, He's uh, up eight? at a place called Sigmaron. He he starts forging. Uh, he basically starts taking souls of uh, old heroes from the old world. It's all about souls floating around, and people bring them to this new uh, reality, which is like infinite realms, right? So yeah. he decides to build his own, his his dudes. He's plucked um, people from death who were like heroic, and he's turned them into his new heroes. Originally, uh, the law said that it could be anyone. It could be. Um, a woman, uh, an, uh, an elf, uh, a dwarf, okay. or whatever, and they'd be reforged into that into a big bulky man. I think they probably wreck on that now because it was silly, and now you have female stormcast, and you don't have dwarf stormcast yet. But maybe they, I don't know. But anyway, he did the stormcast thing. These became his protectors. He was allied with Nagash for a while. Um, they ended up being like a deal brokered, and Nagash takes every soul that dies so then uh when when this relationship broke down sigma had to come up with these dudes who basically have to wrestle the souls back of from uh nagash before they get taken and it's a big okay. thing cause a big old problem nagash just loves souls um he's just a hooked whole, on it he's hooked, he's hooked on, on souls, souls. <laughs> there's something about that yeah um then there's you know and the the Skaven uh, came back. They can gnaw through reality, right? They can they literally gnaw through. They just start eating. I don't know how they start it. Just just start biting <laughs> the the air. They can gnaw through that, and they can they can yeah yeah yeah. They've got a giant city that's outside of reality, um, a ridiculously massive, like beyond all comprehension city, and they can from there they can burst through these little gnaw holes and come out wherever they want so they're controlling everything the horned rat okay. sort of decided went, went you know what this chaos thing seems pretty good and he just went and joined the pantheon of chaos gods I don't know what they think of him and I don't know if he's like officially <laughs> there or just whether the chaos gods are sitting around without Slanesh and they were like who who's this guy that's, and that's the horned rat comes strutting in at me and just sits down and now they're kind of like, oh, he's a bit weird, but we'll just, I mean, we'll just let him let him chill. Um, so the horned rat's a chaos entity now. So Skaven a chaos. Okay. Um, our but beloved not orcs. Chaos. But but they are chaos, but they're not chaos. Yeah, something like that. Right. There's some okay. great tales that go along with this. Um, Gork and Mork uh, are, are back, and um, the the more the ogres more thing and. Um, you know all all our favourites like Corn, Zinch, um, Nurgle. They're all back. Uh, it was all that kind of stuff. The elves, like the really powerful elves from the old world, have kind of become their own creator beings, and they forge, um, they forge elf souls into these new things. I think there's some. This might be this might be wrong as well, but I think there's something about Teclas trying to. Uh, rebuild his people and accidentally makes the Ideneth, which is why they're kind yeah. of like a they're somewhere now, in there. I don't remember the detail, but yes, that's exactly what happened. So uh, yeah, um, Teclis taught them how to do something with souls, I think, and that's why they now have this this yeah. They're all blind and stuff. They're they're a yeah. bit messed up, aren't they? They're like the they're a failed creation race. Uh, cool. Then he then he does the Lumineth. I like Ideneth as well. I think they're great. Um, and uh, You've got Marathi. She spent too much time chilling in Slanesh's belly. So when she came out, she's now like a giant snake witch, like massive. She's got all her snake witches and her harpies and stuff. There's a big event going on with her. Um, there's a, a new book came out or is coming out. Again, need to catch up with AOS. Um, <laughs> all about Marathi. And she's. Do I think she's trying. She's making a bid for control. She's making a bid for power. Never trusted her anyway. She was chilling in the she's Order cities. Cain, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, she's doing some okay. cheeky maneuvers. She was never really a good guy. She was always planning something, but um, people just were like, "Oh, don't worry about that giant snake witch. She's not going to cause any bother." Even though all of her yeah. witches and are like blood drinking, blood sacrificing maniacs, yeah, lunatics, absolutely, totally fine. Yeah, yeah. But she she can um, she appears as a as a normal elven uh, queen. But then okay. she transforms into that giant snake thing. So I'm not sure your your average bro sees her flying around in snake mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's lo- there's loads of stuff going on. The- there's new dwarf factions that are really great. Uh, the dwarf, uh, one of the dwarf gods, is like a uh, a big blacksmith for Sigma, and the other one had a big fight with Gork or Mork or someone that lasted like a billion years and then they both ex- they hit each other so hard at the end they exploded or something and that's what the the fire slayers are all about trying to they get all the bits of uh gold that blew up out of their dwarf god who exploded from hitting someone too hard and they push it into their skin to get power and they think once they've used all the power up he comes back you've got the caradrons who are like your your pirates now really good stuff and it's all it's all new they've they've tried to re-think elves and dwarves and there's no um human faction as it is yet they they've kind of got legacy stuff in there which you really feels like a, a tied you over kind of thing yeah and you can so, see so it do you think that like a whole new faction is coming for humans there's got to be at some point i think people are waiting for it um i think it'd be really good to go with the um sort of religious fanatic side either that or you had them like worshiping a storm, uh, not worshiping Stormcast, but like a good accompaniment to Stormcast, um, with loads of Sigma stuff going on. But um, whether they'll do that, I don't know. Okay. They could come up with a completely new faction because that's the thing; their ideas are going crazy now. So they've got the the new Soul Blight are probably one of the newest factions that kind of really sticks to its roots um, yeah. in terms of vampires and blood knights and stuff. But then the other undead they've come up with, Ossiart Bone Reapers, absolute madness. It's people that um, this faction goes around and basically says to, to villages and towns, if you don't give me enough bones to make my yeah. dudes out of, uh, we're going to kill all of you. So then it comes to bone collecting day. They turn up and are like, yeah, you're missing a bone, mate. Quite a big bone, like maybe the size of an arm bone. Uh, I'll so take that arm, thank you. We're going to have to... Ki- yeah, well, people do it themselves. They're like, we're going to have to kill your whole town. And they're like, oh, okay, hang on a sec. Oh, there you go, I have my arm. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> I like, grim. I like, I, like the, I like the... Oh, okay, hang on a sec. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. fucking hell, we just missed a bone. Yeah, well, I'll get you one. A- Don't worry, I'll get you one. Jeffrey, I said we need 32 bones... There's only 31 here. Now I've got to... Oh, cut your arm off. Um, That's why there's no human factions. Between the bone tide and the soul yeah. drink and all that kind of stuff going on, they're all dead anyway. Well, humans are everywhere. Again, humans are like the the, the generic population of the of some of the realms. Um, and a lot of the books are written with of like from their perspective or Stormcast perspective in towns full of people. The Stormcast yeah. are like the elite guard of, of, of humanity. Originally, um, dwarves and elves and storm and uh, humans all lived together in these free cities. They were called. Um, it's cool, and uh, yeah, it's it's imaginative. Get reading the law more than I have, because uh, I'm a bit rusty. <laughs> it's, and um, like, you'll find like there's how, cool stuff in there. I like how free it is, though. Like, I'm a big fan of how yeah. they're free to go in whatever direction they want to go in like whatever yeah. and I, I you know i've had my iron age stigma for ages um you've tried to sell it to me for a long time so i'm going to commit at some point uh, and i'm not going to commit mm-hmm. to a time frame because i've learned a lot when i've been doing youtube over the last because he's years. rubbish the first thing uh, i learned yeah. is never ever commit to a time frame yeah but chris i think we should perhaps propose a brand new series for diplomat i think yeah. we should pro- propose a series that's that's how to play or or liam learns age of sigma uh, yeah you can teach me how to play the game because it doesn't Apparently, sound like nowadays it's that difficult that different it's, even it's not a hard game um so i think it was just before lockdown uh i met up with one of the 
regulars and um we played a game of age of sigma and it was really really easy to get back into and that's actually one of the great things about it is that it's really straightforward and it's to the, it's straightforward to the point where like even damage carries over and everything so you you do six damage six wounds are taken on a unit and it's all a big melee but it there's so many fun things that go along with it there's lots of spells lots of big hero stuff it's it's got a very different dynamic to 40k it very much uh, is about like big epic pieces that happen and big clashes in the middle and things like that that's how it was there's a lot more sh there is a lot more shooting now but when you get the right armies together it can look really really good so sweet sounds good yeah i'm excited to give it a bash when we finally finish this crazy path out of lockdown in the uk yeah um hopefully at some point we can get chris down in the new studio that's been that's been built yeah and we can start some how to play age of sigma i, I think we should call it stuff we should call it chris and liam and chris learn how to play age of sigma again and chris remembers the the law that he used to recite <laughs> that's a long title though yeah no but that should be it and it just fills up the whole thing this yeah, yeah. I want to just put an, an apology out there about this. This isn't really the end of this cacophony podcast. This is we've been so plagued with with issues, and it's still a little bit awkward to do, isn't it? So it hasn't really come across how we usually do it. So you're going to have to go check out ECP because we are way ruder, way cruder, and way duder on the ECP. We've just Wait, had dude, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I to be honest with you, I genuinely found this interesting with you talking about Age of Sigma. Um, yeah, just I've had a chance to waffle on for a bit, but I I still can't really see you or anything. So, we're... no, <laughs> it's been one of those weird ones where we haven't really been able to get it going. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm watching you with through what looks like an 18 year old's computer screen because it's just yeah. blurry and it's just pixelated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what's behind it because clearly something some like uh, <laughs> bit defender or something is currently censoring something on Liam's screen and all I can see yeah. is like a flesh coloured area <laughs> with with hair but um, yeah. yeah Edge Sigma uh, we'll have to, you can, I want to know what, what after, after this Chris you can go away and you can go and yeah. find us some good podcasting software or I will um, and I have to speak to them about how we get rid of this piece of crap because this is just the worst ever um, I'm sure we'll figure something out. But um, I'm hoping people actually, will suggest something so I can look it up, and then I don't have to do the the hard the big brain bit. I can just do the well. This guy said this works, and we'll type it in. You don't need to do the big brain bit. You have Google. Google does it for you. Uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other search engines are available. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to kill it anyway because we, I mean we've been chatting for a while now. To be fair, we've been chatting yeah. for about forty minutes in total, and I only wanted to do a twenty-minute thing because I like to keep them slightly shorter for YouTube because YouTube yep. seems to prefer that. Um, but like I said, the Enders Cacophony podcast is back. Uh, we are doing it weekly, and it is going to be probably this dreadful for the next few weeks as we try and find some new software. Yeah. Uh, but but I mean, I think the audio is going to come across okay as long as it doesn't kick you out. It'll be all right. Um, Hope so. so they are back in deployment zone episode one of the new format is up uh on dz was up last friday episode two hopefully we'll be going up this friday if we get a chance to do another one in between now and friday conscious of the fact that it's your wife's birthday and yep. what's interesting is tomorrow so this video goes live on tuesday tomorrow uh, wednesday uh, i am also going to be live on mini wargaming's shrine of chaos with mini wargaming dave so um you can check out that as well and go head over to mini wargaming and check out shrine, shrine of chaos i think it's on twitch but it might be on youtube live i don't know um so i'm doing that tomorrow and then hopefully we'll get a chance to squeeze in a new ecp for friday and then yeah. if we don't because your wife's birthday so be it otherwise we will be doing an endless cacophony podcast It'll be every, every week, week. Yeah. and i'm so excited about getting regular with that again uh, even if it does get to a point where we completely chin the video software off and just go back to doing audio like we used to do because it used yeah. to sound so nice and we had a really cool jingle and maybe we do that maybe we just have a a, a still picture of ourselves and that's yeah which is which is how we'd see it as we recorded it just as yeah, yeah, but it'll be slightly less pixelated. But otherwise, yeah, yeah. like a portrait photo or something. Um, <laughs> so, so maybe we'll do that. So um, yeah, that's about that. That's I think I don't know what else I can say apart from thanks very much for sticking with us through. Yeah, this thanks podcast. for sticking with us. 
Um, if you have enjoyed this content, please think about <laughs> uh, dropping down to employmentzone.tv and uh, subscribing to the website. Um, there's loads of good content on there. There, uh, Quipster, Alex does his fireside chats, which are other forms of this type of, uh, of podcast. There's also um, battle reports and the brand new, brand new play on tabletop series is live. The second episode goes live on Thursday, the first of April. I'm super excited for that one as well. Um, so you can check out all that stuff. Uh, if you want to support the channel further, you can head on below and hit the link for Element Games. Uh, it's an affiliate link, so they know you came. To directly from uh, me and all winters uh, and it directly financially supports the channel if you make a purchase using that link so thank you very much bookmark it save it always use element and, and you need to be on it with some of the releases games workshop chucking out recently because they're not making a lot of things which is a shame um and then finally um you, you can if you want glorious beers like mine and chris's you can head on over to the beard struggle and use a discount code that's below for 20 percent off if you want to that's yeah about it. For it. what about you chris anything you want to add any more sponsors yeah i mean if you want to uh um, just trying to find something to sponsor. If you want to buy me some orcs, <laughs> go for it. I could do with some war bikes, please. Just you know, send I them my way. I, I thought I I'd put some in the background. Had... Yeah, well, I I haven't seen it, Chris. It's just been a black blur the whole yeah. time. But I, I noticed you had something in the background, product placement. So I, I feel like I should probably show this off, Chris. Oh, he's going to show it off. Woo! Can you see that, Chris? Or is that just yeah, a, a gray gray mass? Yeah, woo. Uh, this I think should be stuck to it. <laughs> that way it should be stuck to that. But yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted a cool model, and like you said, Age of Sigma got amazing big centerpieces, so I, I made most in the gash. It's not completely finished, but I made most in the yeah. gash, um, and I wanted to show that off just because I've been building an Age of Sigma model. But um, yeah, maybe there'll be some more AOS content coming soon. And don't worry, we're not going to reduce maybe. or stop the 40k stuff because that's immense amounts of fun. Like I said, Brom mm. and I are working on something important and special as well. So that's about that. Um. We don't do singing out anymore, do we? You do. I didn't. Just do it. Go on. It just looks just too strange it. on the video. Just do it! I can't even remember the words that we used to sing. You have Come to on. give me an example of it, Chris, so I, so I know what it is that's expected of me in the future. All right. Thank you for listening, my dears, to the Endless Cacophony Podcast. Yeah, I'm never doing that. Cut the feed. <laughs> Cut the feed! <laughs>